lance board. Why, this might just be the highlight of our misadventures today. <laughs> Prove your strategic wits. There is but one rule. The Dark King must fall in two moves. Are you a commander of armies? Or a shivering pawn? Fodder for cleverer minds. Looking ahead. Whatever ancient purpose is imbued in these halls, it may not welcome our presence here. We should be wary of whatever lurks beneath the dust. How can I help? Seek and you shall find me. Place is quite a find. Much lovely day, this for now. Everything, despite everything. A good leader has the insight to find good counsel. As a war reaches its end, there is one who doesn't advise for the city's prosperity. Find him, and strike him down. Elminster's not around, so might as well. Interesting. Oh, hold still, will you? 
you? going. True champion knows justice and eliminates those who stand in its way. Restore the balance of justice. Let's get on with it. The apple. The painting depicts a red-haired man stealing a shiny apple from a cart in an open-air market. You know this market, the Wide, where Baldur's Gate citizens and visitors gather to conduct trade and wax political. The Child. A red-haired man is portrayed with his cloak's hood lowered, giving an apple to a smiling urchin. Several other children are huddled behind the one receiving the apple, hands outstretched. The induction. A red-haired man is depicted in hushed conversation with a dark-haired woman. She wears a cloak with an unusual symbol on it, tally marks totaling the number nine. The theft. A red-haired man is depicted in the Hall of Wonders, thieving what looks to be a priceless artifact. A red-haired man is depicted running through the city streets, a flaming fist officer chasing just behind. A cloaked woman, hair dark as a raven, looks on from a safe distance. The Judgment. A stern judge, his pockets full of coin, orders a red-haired man to the gallows. A shiny apple rests on the ground nearby.
A little soothing's in order. This honorable judge was banished. But judge... The hanging. A red-haired man is depicted hanging from a gallows as a crowd looks on. You notice a child in the crowd, a falling tear leaving a trail on his cheek. Freedom. A red-haired man walks the streets of Baldur's Gate, clad in a billowing cloak. You catch a glimpse of a sly smile beneath his hood and a golden coin in his hand. The cell. A stern prison guard slides a warm meal into the thief's cell. The red-haired man has a 10-day left to serve, judging by the scratchings on the wall behind him. Courage does the hero march, fettered by the taxing chains of fear. A stalwart soul must ever persevere. With insight does the hero choose, guidance born of ancient wisdom proven. Peace, not strife, the undenied conclusion. With justice does the hero rule. Lead not the guiltless lamb to bloody slaughter, nor cleanse the lion's sins in sacred water. With strategy does the hero scheme. A cunning mind, a hundred steps ahead, your allies close, your rivals stunned in dread. Worthy you are found. Go forth, hero. Seize your fate and rise, great worm, heart of the gate. Great Worm is nothing but bone and memories. and not yours, but the worms. I am Ansor, heart of the gate, butchered in flesh, risen in spirit. Ansor wends his way through your mind like an unstoppable river. Your body is unmoving, yet thought flows effortlessly between you. The spirit pauses, and you feel the astral prism stir. Ansel senses the Emperor's presence within it. Answer me, Facey. Why have you come? A deep sigh resonates within you. The torrent stills, only disturbed by the dragon's next words. Brack, my words aren't meant for you. They're meant for him. 
The Emperor stirs in the astral prison, then in you, calm, curious, and detached. presence has stirred me, as it ever did. I am awakened. Answer. It's been too long. We knew each other once, long ago. We crossed the Kalim together, and sailed the Altengri. We built a city by the sea. Answer was my friend. Friend, yes, and more. Until you killed me. Have you come to dance on my bones, Borderan? Was slaying me not satisfaction enough? Satisfaction? No. You left me no choice. You had every choice. You were becoming illithid. I offered you merciful death. You chose to fight. And now you bring your thrall before me. How far has the great Borderan fallen? Consciousness hovers just above yours, searching, seeing. Dear answer. Enough! I gave you everything, Borderan, and you repaid me in slaughter. It is time I return the favor. Let my bones rise and the storms gather. Witness, Borderan. The final tempest has come. I am the heart of the gate. I am the one who roars. This time, you will not escape it.
this be on my way. see him again.
My past is past. I concealed nothing from you. I simply left out the details that were not pertinent to our cause. But it seems you are interested in them. I killed Ansor out of necessity. For the crime of being a Lilithid, he would have killed me first. It's like I always told you. I was just like you. An adventurer who yearned for greatness. And in mortal terms, I achieved it. As captain of the Wandering Eye, I acquired enough gold to found Baldur's Gate. I stayed for a while to watch my city grow. But it was not enough. I grew restless again. The sea called to me. And I ran to her with open arms. Life at sea was not easy. My ship was destroyed. My crew lost. But my spirit was far from broken. I was determined to return in triumph once again. I heard of treasure in Moonrise. I strove to find it. What I found was an illithid colony, where I acquired a tadpole much like yours, and became a mind flayer, enthralled to the Elder Brain. It was Ansor who found me. Ansor who pulled me from the Brain's domination. Ansor who brought me home. He sought to cure me of my sickness, called on every healer he could find, nearly broke his spirit in the attempt. But he failed to understand. I wanted no healing. I was not sick. Stelmane's death was not my fault. Ansor's death was born of necessity. And make no mistake, I greed them both. Ansor, in particular. Even after he had exhausted all possibility of reversing my condition, he still clung to hope. I tried to convince him of my reality. I was on the cusp of greatness beyond my wildest dreams. But all he could see was a mind flayer. He came to me as I slept, a mercy killing in his mind. I saw the tears. I felt his grief. I had no choice but to kill him first. It was an act of self-preservation. There were no alternatives. In my place, you would have done the same. Do not think that I am ignorant of what I have lost. I may not regret my actions, but I do regret that they were necessary. While the past is beyond my influence, the present is not. It is time we move on. Two nether stones remain in the hands of the Chosen. We must find them before we confront the brain. I'm not going to last much longer.
Take you. Ah, another. I shall be here in thy camp, for whenever thou hast need of my services. Be assured, it is not by choice. Thou walkest alone. On all these harsh nights, thou hast sought no company. Love is no domain of mine, but it is often cited as the purpose of m And thus thou art alone. Fate, dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhap then thou must return. This is the price of balance. Well counted. By doom and dusk I strike thy name from the archives. Rise. Wretched thing. Pull yourself together. Ansur is dead. There will be no great tempest roaring through the skies, no dragon redeemer to save us. What hope then for Baldur's Gate? Without the great worm's aid, is the city doomed to fall? You braved the worm's lair, seeking the savior. Yet it was you. All of you, who vanquished the undead abomination which Ansur became. You are more powerful than you understand. It is you who are the Tempest. It is you who are the heart of the gate. Ansur is dead. There will be no great Tempest roaring through the skies, no Dragon Redeemer to save us. What hope then for Baldur's Gate? Without the Great Worm's aid, is the city doomed to fall? You braved the worm's lair, seeking the savior. Yet it was you, all of you, who vanquished the undead abomination which Ansur became. You are more powerful than you understand. It is you who are the Tempest. It is you who are the heart of the gate. You're right. We are the warriors who'll slay the Absolute. We are the Guardians who'll defend this fair city. The brain will fall, and the people will hail us as champions. I could even claim my father's own ducal title and carry his banner after this. Grand Duke Will Ravenguard, Marshal of the Flaming Fist, the city's truest defender.
I fought to right the wrongs of the coast, to slay the monsters that hunt the helpless. What good is a champion who puts himself above the people? What good am I as a politician just out of reach? There will be no Grand Duke Will Raven Guard, and there will be no Blade of Frontiers. I am now the Blade of Avernus. For as long as demons and devils imperil the Sword Coast, they will be my prey. A calm settles over you. The Elder Brain is a menace, but with the Blade of Avernus at your side, you know you will triumph. The Blade of Avernus. A new name for a changed man. The four pillars finally rise within me. Courage, insight, strategy, justice. I'm not to abide them, but to become them. Ah, but enough reflection for today. I'm of a mind to celebrate. A hearty meal would do the trick. A few hunks of fresh venison, a round of brown ale. What do you say? Ah, uh, too bad. Maybe you'll go changing your mind once I've hunted some deer and scrounged up the ale. <laughs> Let's hope Gale doesn't take offense if I assume cooking duties. Just the once. I scout both the Hells and the Coast's havens, and I destroy every fiend that dares put its eye on Faerun. Will takes a sharp breath. He's keeping something from you. Yes, there is. I will be hunting Mazora. I won't let her claim one more soul, slay one more victim. I'm going to make my way to the Hells and tear the horns right off her damned head. Father trained me in the sword and the bow. They'll have to sustain me. Damn right. I'll cut her to ribbons before she can so much as groan Zariel's name. Sure. Explain so much. Listen to me. I knew another like you, Gorion's ward, one of Baldur's Gate's great heroes. Baal's blood ran through their veins too. They burned away their own darkness with their own inner light. They chose courage, they chose honor, and so can you. The Absolute's voice is gone, but I still hear its echoes. Reflections of reflections. I failed, Father. The worm is fallen. A terrible fate for Ansur, my son. Yet my hopes for the city's future have never been higher. I don't understand. You and your allies slayed the undead terror that was once the Great Answer. You are stronger than even the Great Worm. You will be the one to part the storms and lead the people through. You, not Answer. 
are the savior we need. First, you will fell the Absolute. Then we will rebuild Baldur's Gate. We will take back our city together. I will name you Baldur's Gate's newest Grand Duke of the Council. You will be hailed Heart of the Gate. Grand Duke? I look the part of a fiend. I will tell the citizens and the patriarchs of your good works. They will know you carry your father's banner. Uncertainty fills the air. Will has reached a fork in his path. In which direction will he travel? Will? I fought to right the wrongs of the coast. To slay the men and monsters that hunt the helpless. It is in the wilds that I find my courage, not in the halls of upper city estates. There will be no Grand Duke Will Ravenguard, and there will be no Blade of Frontiers. I am now the Blade of Avernus. For as long as demons and devils imperil the Sword Coast, they will be my prey. Then go with my blessing. Be Faerun's great defender. Courage, insight, strategy, justice. Let these be the lights that guide you, my son. Hail the Blade of Avernus. The Blade of Avernus! A calm settles over you. The Elder Brain is a menace, but with the Blade of Avernus at your side, you know you can triumph. The Blade of Avernus. How marvelous. It rolls right off the tongue. Tell me, little bug, who should Will's first target be? Yes, to kill the Absolute, to free the Infected, to end the Illithid Grand Design. Could there be a more heroic journey? But what about the next battle? And the next? How mighty will the stalwart blade be without warlock powers to help him? Tell me you haven't forgotten. Once the Absolute is no more, so is my aid. Well, perhaps I might pay a visit once he's settled. Offer some advice. A bit of infernal altruism. If you will. Ah, the thrill of the unknown. I can't wait to see how this epic plays out.
you feel that? The Heralds themselves tremble to face such a scourge as Will threatens to be. The blade of Avernus, forged by a Cambion, wetted on a dragon's hide. Those devils won't know what's coming for them. I question the wisdom of that decision, but so be it. I'll be here in the meantime, idling away the hours. Will intends to take the fights to the very hells themselves? <laughs> I can think of no one more capable. You truly are a feast for my eyes. Nature outdid itself with you. Did you wish to speak? Come here to me. Was there something else you wanted, my heart? The Blade of Avernus. I can't think of a better man than Will to take up the title. It's about time someone stood up to the evil fox populating the Hells. Let's go, go, go.
No one stopped me yet.